Hi everybody and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me and Dane and to the Crumbs and Doilies Bakery here in London where the gang are just over here icing and baking loads and loads of cakes so we thought we'd better bring you guys another cake recipe today. Yep and you guys always want cake recipes and this one is a Crumbs and Doilies OG which means original gangster if <laughs> y'all didn't know it's a cookies and cream cake. Yes this is like a proper classic it's really simple as well we're going to do four layers of our famous chocolate sponge. We're going to make it a little bit different with some black cocoa though to make it more like an Oreo. We're going to fill it with vanilla buttercream ganache cookies. We're going to ice it with my favorite buttercream, I think. I say yes. this all the time, but it's an <laughs> Oreo buttercream. We're obviously going to put a drip on it and we're going to top it with even more Oreos. Sounds really delicious. Yes and we better get started. So we're yeah. gonna start with the cake recipe, which is similar to the one that we did the other week with the Biscoff S'mores cake, but with a little twist. So we're gonna start with our wet ingredients, and I've got 390 grams of vegetable oil, which we're gonna pour into a big bowl. You do need a big bowl for this. Yeah. This is a big cake. <laughs> <laughs> over the edge. But we are gonna give you a few different options in the description box below. If you wanna make a smaller one, that is fine. Yes. So next up we've got buttermilk and we've got 450 grams of this. Yep, and like we said last week, if you can't find buttermilk, you can also make it by adding some whole milk and lemon juice until it kind of curdles and goes a little bit thick. So you leave it for about five minutes and it will thicken up. Yeah, we did a Tuesday tip, um, Nikki did a Tuesday tip actually. We'll put the link to that in the description box below so you can go and get a proper recipe for it. Um, so we're gonna whisk these together yep. and then we're gonna put in some coffee, right? So yes. 450 mils of coffee. And you don't have to, use coffee if you don't want to but it just intensifies the chocolate flavor you can use water if you want you have to use coffee you have to use coffee <laughs> and just um, a couple of tablespoons of instant ground coffee will do to yeah. add to your hot water yeah I really think like I know a lot of people don't like coffee I never used to like coffee no I don't like drinking coffee but in the cake it's amazing because yeah. it's just so kind of deep and intense it has right. really well so those are all mixed in, so now we're gonna add six eggs. I'm gonna crack them into this bowl here, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so we're gonna crack these. Always do it into a separate bowl because you never know, you might get a bit of shell in yeah. your um, cake and that's kind of gross. <laughs> yeah, that famous egg crack that you're doing, two-handed, I can't do that. <laughs> Just cutting it out there, I can't do that. I'll practice, I'm but... gonna challenge you yes. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so put all of your eggs in, and you just want to give this a really good mix to make sure that you are properly breaking those eggs up. Yep. Um, it's not you're not going to like whip or kind of create any volume or air or anything. You just want to make sure it's fully combined. Yes. Yeah. And then once we've done that, oh, we're moving on to the dry ingredients. We've got um, caster sugar, plain flour, and two types of cocoa. And we've also got some raising agents and um, salt as well, so bicarb. Um, and the cocoa is mm. really special because we've got black cocoa and normal cocoa as well. And like Sally said at the start, the black cocoa is just really going to kind of intensify the flavour of the chocolate cake and make it reminiscent of an Oreo. Yes, yes, it is great. You can find it online if you sort of do a search for black cocoa, you'll probably find something. But don't worry if you can't find it, like just use all regular cocoa. It's completely yeah. fine. So, do you want to start chucking in some dry yes. mix? So, I've just put them all together and then whack it oh all in gosh. here. Oh my gosh, okay, here we go. I'll do, I'll do a little <laughs> bit at a time. <laughs> there we go, teamwork. Yes, love it. And a face full of cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Oh, okay. When you've measured a lot of chocolate cakes here at the bakery, at the end of the day, you might blow your nose and it might look <laughs> a bit gross. Just gonna, just gonna be honest. <laughs> it is very true, it yeah. is very true. <laughs> Okay. Oh, look, just big enough, this bowl. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so you just want to mix it until it's nice and smooth, and then we'll pop it into some tins, which I shall pre-grease for you. Yes. And if you haven't seen or you don't know, the grease spray that we always use, cake release spray, um, is available on cupcakegemma.com. So if you're having trouble getting your cakes out of your tins or you're fed up of butter and flouring them, yeah. it just takes a while, look how quick. I'm doing this, fish, bash, bosh. Yeah, and like butter and flour is a bit kind of faffy if you're making quite a lot of cakes. And also you end up getting through quite a lot of butter. You do, yeah. Um, which is fine, but it can, be, can get a bit pricey. You realize how much butter you're buying just to kind of 
grease your tins grease the with. tins and sometimes it burns on the bottom as well if you put yeah. too much so this is a great way of getting a nice even spread it looks so good it still looks chocolatey but it just looks kind of a bit more decadent decadent and, yeah mm. there we go so we're just going to evenly kind of pour this into our tins <laughs> here we go <laughs> gonna make a mess <laughs> And you want to make sure that your oven is preheated to 175 degrees Celsius. And if you're not sure what temperature your oven actually bakes at, you can get yourself an in-oven thermometer. It just helps your baking be a little bit more precise. They're super cheap, but you can get them online. Yeah, and preheating is definitely a thing you want to do. You want to make sure the whole of your oven is nice and warm before you put your cakes in, yeah. which we are going to go and do now. <laughs> Okay, so these are going to go in for 25 minutes and you want to test it by popping a skewer into each sponge to make sure it comes out clean. So whilst our cakes are baking, we can get on with making our icing. We're just going to make some vanilla icing and then we're going to add the Oreos to it a bit later. Yeah, so Sally's got some soft butter in the, in the bowl. It's 750 grams. Of it's butter. Unsalted butter as well. Unsalted. And it's really important that your butter is really soft. So you can take your sticks or blocks of butter out the night before to soften. Um, or if you're a bit stripped for time, pop it in a bowl, chop it up, and whack it in the microwave for a few seconds at a time just to soften it and give it a stir in between. Yeah, if you don't have soft butter, you'll find it absolutely impossible to whip up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the reason our butter cream is so great is because we get it so light and fluffy and airy. And to do that, you need soft butter. You do. So we're going to start whipping this now. We've got it in the mix, but you could do this with an electric hand whisk as well. And we're going to whip it up for probably about four to five minutes, but you just want to keep going until it's fluffy and really white in colour. And there we go. This has Ooh. been whipping for four to five minutes. <laughs> Everyone thought I said 45 minutes. Don't whip it for that long. No. <laughs> <laughs> but look how amazingly white and, oh, it just looks amazing, doesn't it? it looks like, yeah. I just kind of want to eat it, but I don't want to eat it. It's like whipped cream, <laughs> yeah. whipped chantilly cream. So now it is time to add in some icing sugar. So we've got 1,300 grams. <laughs> but don't forget, it's because we're making a big cake because we've got loads of people that we want to feed. Yeah. <laughs> but we have given you some options below. So you want to start by putting a little bit of icing sugar in at a time. And then we're going to mix it up. We're going to keep beating because the more you beat, the fluffier it's going to be. So we're just going to add it in a few parts. So put it on a low speed first, obviously. <laughs> I'm just giving this a little scrape around because particularly when you've got loads of mixture in your bowl, there'll be bits around the edge, around the bottom that haven't been fully kind of mixed through. So you probably want to do this quite a lot whilst you're baking. Yep. So that um, is ready. Nice. <laughs> and then we're going to add some whole milk. I've got about six to nine tablespoons here. So we're not going to add all of it at once because we want to get the consistency. You might have kind of softer butter to begin with and then it's a bit looser or it might be a bit firmer. So you want to add a little bit at a time, mix it through and see what the consistency is like before adding any more. So I think this might need a little bit more, just a tiny little splash more. Remember you can always add more milk later when we come to icing it if you feel like it is a bit stiff but it's going to keep it on a low speed i'm going to add a little drop more and i'm going to add some vanilla extract mm, it's the good stuff <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to mix that through and it is ready okay it's ready <laughs> <laughs> Right, so once your buttercream is done, you can store this for kind of three to five days, really, at room temperature. Just want to make sure it's completely airtight, so in a nice big Tupperware container, um, or you can just cling film this bowl. So we are going to wait for our cakes to bake. They've got about a minute or two left on the clock, and then we'll wait, let them cool down, <laughs> we'll bring it all back, and we can get decorating. Yeah. Okay, so our cakes are out of the oven. I'm just going to trim them using the cake leveller. 
and this is going to get rid of that crust on the top and the caramelization around the outside that it's been baking against the tin. Make it nice and neat as well. And give us some snacks to eat. Yes. <laughs> But uh, remember that you can make really amazing cake truffles with your off cuts, so don't, whatever you do, don't throw them away. I'm sure there's someone in your house that will probably just very happily sit in front of a bowl of cakey off cuts. Yeah, I would. <laughs> so while Stain is trimming down his cake, I'm just going to make some ganache for the filling of our cake. So we've got 100 grams of dark chocolate and 100 grams of double cream. I'm just going to put one into the other and I'm just going to pop off to the microwave. I'm going to heat them a few seconds at a time until this is one lovely smooth ganache. Now it's time to fill and stack the cake. Yes, it's everybody's favourite part, I think, <laughs> other than eating. So we've got our vanilla icing here, and I'm going to take a little bit out because you don't want to get any crumbs in the icing that you're going to want to use later to top coat with. So put that in a separate little bowl, and as usual, Put a little bit on your cake board just to stick the first one down so your cake's not... It's a bit like cake cement. <laughs> it was just like cake cement, but way more delicious yes. than cement. <laughs> and then grab your first layer of this amazing looking sponge. I mean, look at the colour of it. So squishy, mm. nice and intense in flavour. Yeah, I can't wait to eat it. Mm. Right, so on we go with some icing. So a nice big dollop in the centre. And you want to put a lot on. A, because it tastes great, but also, <laughs> I mean, let me try and show you here. Can you see when you put a little bit on, how many crumbs pull up like this? You don't want that in your icing, right? You want it to be lovely and as white as possible in there without the crumbs mixing in. So put a big dollop on top, and then you can push that out to the edges. Like so. Oh, this icing looks so it's fluffy. It's so whipped up. <laughs> it's lush. We've outdone ourselves. <laughs> And also when you put a lot of icing in, it makes the cake nice and tall and it looks mm. a bit more regal. And, and oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little pool of ganache in here, which, you know, any of this is optional. If you don't want to do this bit, then don't worry about it. Yeah. But like Dane did before, we're going to use the offset palette knife here and we're just going to scoop out a little divot from the centre, like a little pool. And then we're going to pour in our ganache. That's okay. quite handy for this because it will make sure that it doesn't come out the sides. Yes, yeah. exactly. Ready? Here we go. Wow, look at that. Yummy! Mm. <laughs> I hope it doesn't so come good. out the sides, otherwise this is going to be a nightmare <laughs> to ice. <laughs> right. And then in the middle, we're going to put some Oreos. Yes. Just break them up. Should yes. we put them in the middle? Go for it. Yeah, why Put not? Put it wherever. Put them everywhere. everywhere. This is going to add a little bit of crunch when you eat your cake as well. Get those different yeah. textures going on. Okay. Stop. I've loaded it up. <laughs> <laughs> so then grab your second layer of sponge. When you're handling them, you just want to get your hands under it as much as possible so that it doesn't break. And then line it up nice and gently because then we've got a little kind of bit of wiggle room to move it around and then give it a little squish on top. And then we're just going to keep doing that until we get to the top. This is now ready for a crumb coat, and we're going to do that with Oreo buttercream, which is simply buttercream with Oreos. Yeah. <laughs> we just put some Oreos in to a food processor and blitz them until they were nice and fine. I've done way too much here, quite clearly. <laughs> Got a bit overexcited with the Oreos. But I'm just going to put in a small handful. You can put as many Oreo crumbs as you want in this. Mix it through, have a little look at it. Yeah, you can always 
add, but you can't take away. So don't put too many because it might make the icing a bit too stiff because yeah. it always can dry things out a little bit. That is so icing. true. Yeah. So once you've got it, we're just going to, yeah, crumb coat it. So all of this splurging out the edge, that's totally fine. That will all get mixed through. So using a nice big palette knife, put loads of icing on because it's easier to put it on in a big amount and then smooth it off later. And then once you've got the icing on, grab your cake smoother and we're just going to smooth out the edges and the top. You absolutely whizzed through that. Thanks, man. <laughs> it's like beauty, I've done beauty. it before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is now ready to go in the fridge to set. So we're going to leave it for about half an hour minimum, but you can leave it for way longer than that. You just want to be able to touch it and it'll be nice and firm. So, get the da for me. <laughs> this way. <laughs> Time to do the final icing of the cake which is the top coat, and we're going to come back with our Oreo icing. And we just kind of got rid of the um, icing that we used before for the crumb coat, just in case it had a little bit of chocolate crumb in there. And I'm just going to take my straight edge palette knife again, take a lovely dollop mm. on that, and then go straight onto the cake. Icing with Oreo icing, don't you? Mm, it's so smooth. I don't know what it is about the crumbs, but they're just really forgiving. Yeah, like totally. Like when we sort of are training people here, we always get them to start with the Oreo cake because it's like, I don't know, they just look better, easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the crumbs distract from any little yeah. divots or anything. <laughs> but we will ice this very smoothly. So don't you worry. <laughs> Perfectly flush. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Looking pretty sharp, but we're going to make it look even better with a ganache strip. So I've got about 50 grams of chocolate, 50 grams of cream mixture in here. I've got it in a bottle, but you can do this with a piping bag. So let's do the drips around the side first. Now we're just going to fill the top, so squeeze some <laughs> ganache all over. <laughs> yeah. Real Jackson Pollock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Artistic license. <laughs> and then just grab your palette knife and just smooth that out. Just be really careful when you get to the edges that you don't kind of knock more off the sides and ruin those lovely drips. We should get a double drip. We get a double drip. We save that one for the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth it out. And we're going to put some blobs of icing on top of this, but because this is really soft, we need to let it set. So we're just going to pop it in the fridge for like 10 minutes and then we'll be back to finish it off. I can't pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's really heavy. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So we've put the remaining vanilla buttercream into a piping bag fitted with a star nozzle, just like this. And we're just going to put some blobs and some Oreos on top of our cake.
Ta-da! So pretty! I love it. Now it's all left to do is eat it. Yes, please! <laughs> <laughs> right, let's um... You do it, you do it. Okay. Okay. This is a big test. I want a big piece. Okay. Ooh, that's a good cut. That's a good cut. Look at those late, you can see the ganache, mm. the buttercream, the Oreos. And the mm -mm. colour of that sponge looks just like an Oreo. Woo. Oh, hurry up, <laughs> pack yourself one, I want to eat it. Okay, quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a huge size. I don't care. But well, we're going to have to share the cake. No, we're not. Yes, yeah, we, we are. are. <laughs> Okay, let's go, let's dig in. Mm. Mm. That's mm. so good. The black cocoa makes just that little bit extra difference. Yeah, like it's kind of the same recipe that we gave you a few weeks ago for the Biscoff, but the um, the, or the black cocoa really changes it quite a lot. Yeah, so. and really good idea to put the ganache on the inside. Thanks. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> it's mm. so good. Have a look at this. Squishy, squishy cake. And it's not too sweet either. You not know, too having sweet, the Oreos yeah. in the icing like cuts through the sweetness of the vanilla buttercream. So if you're not one for like super sweet cakes, this is perfect. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. And thank you so much for asking for it because I feel like we kind of thought we'd already given you this recipe. Yeah, we kind of skipped over it a little bit, mm, didn't we? But no, now you've got it. Yeah. So please make it and share all your photos with us on Instagram using hashtag Cupcake Gemma. Yeah. And we can all see them. And at Crumbs and Doilies as well, and at Cupcake Gemma online. Yes. Cupcake Gemma on Instagram. <laughs> I think I would never have to say it right <laughs> um, And also make sure you subscribe to the channel down there. There's a little subscribe button and a little bell next to it. And if you click that, you'll get notified every time we upload a video. Yes. And we'll be back. And we promise, I know there's loads of you out there that are like, when are you going to do the croc on bouche? You promised us a croc on bouche. We are working We're on gonna it. We're going to do it, yes. We promise. <laughs> <laughs> Adding some final tweaks yeah. and making sure it's perfect because it's going to be insane. It's going to be epic. And we, yeah. we literally can't wait to do it, but it's going to be a full-on, day-long shoot. So yeah. bear with us, all right? <laughs> We're getting there. So we'll be back next week. Um, in the meantime, have a fab time making this cake and an even better time eating this cake. Yes. We will see you then. Mm. Who wants some cake? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> No, because I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And then we're going to mix it up. We're going to keep beating because the more you beat, the fluffier it's going to be. So we're just going to add it in a few parts. So put it on a low speed first, obviously. <laughs> Low speed, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and make a mess. <laughs> I'm like a smoke machine. Mm.